welcome back to Match Fishing TV UK. I'm Dan, uh, sporting a really awesome shiner today. Um, played cricket at the weekend. Um, you're supposed to hit the ball with the bat, not with your face. Unfortunately, I hit the ball with my face and this is the outcome. You can even see the seam mark if you look closely. So, sorry about looking so ugly on this particular video. But what I wanted to talk to you about uh, was a tackle review this week, but actually, it's not a piece of tackle that I'm going to review, it's a magazine. And for many of you, you'll be subscribed, you'll read this magazine on a monthly basis. It is Match Fishing Magazine. Now, five years ago when I restarted Match Fishing, I looked around for all the resources I could about, you know, tactics, techniques, what, what to do in match situations. Um, my knowledge was still very much stuck back in the late 90s, um, so obviously way, way out of date with the current methods and uh, the ways of fishing and the tackle in some cases. I've been pleasure fishing for a few years, sort of once, twice a year, so I was really out of date. Now I found online resources, obviously YouTube was great, um, you know, some of the forums, maggot drowning, things like that were fantastic as well. But I actually found that this magazine was a, a great source of information for me and allowed me to kind of practice some of the things I was reading in the pages. Now, unless you've been stuck on a desert island, uh, you'll realise that we're in the middle of a, a quite serious crisis, uh, obviously the coronavirus crisis, and it's affected everybody, uh, every workplace, everywhere across the world, pretty much. Um, I, for one, am furloughed at this present time. Uh, don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but the print industry uh, has been hit hard as well. So sadly, you know, I'm going to review Match Fishing Magazine here, but I was also subscribed to Pole Fishing Magazine, which I found really helpful. Uh, Pole Fishing Magazine, great title aside. I looked forward to both of them landing on my uh, doormat each month. Um, really good read. So that was sad. Pole Fishing Magazine has now been incorporated into Match Fishing Magazine. Uh, a bit more on that later. So what do you get in Match Fishing Magazine? Well, as you can see, it's well put together. Um, top anglers, so you've got Andy May there. You know, nice shots. Um, when you go into the opening section, sadly that's Dan Webb saying goodbye this month. Um, a sad, sad... Uh, state of affairs with the covid crisis not quite sure what's going on in the background there seemed like a good guy good genuine guy we start to put his mark on the magazine um loads of good articles again this one if you if you look carefully there's no leaves on the trees or anything so this is another recycled article i think because they haven't been able to get out and do a lot in recent times um it's just a nice thing to flick through you know, again, maybe more winter articles coming up there. If you look at the trees in the background, uh, I think they need a few months of, of sort of near normality to get things going again. Venue Detective, uh, so this is the pole fishing magazine section. Uh, I counted actually that this was 14 and a half pages. So the original magazine was sort of 60 to 90, I think, pages on any given month. Um, yeah, that's... A, Always been a good article, uh, like Andy May a lot. So yeah, it's it's a good read. Um, the new gear, uh, it's not really a review section. And as I said, I've got my concerns about um, them being able to really accurately critique something. You know, one of the things I think is important is um, being able to say, I like this, but I don't quite like that etc or this would suit this type of angle it's really quite vague um but i don't think again that it's because they want to be that way necessarily it's just that they can't afford to upset their advertisers which is um which is quite sad some great articles in here though um still you know really helpful um lee carries in here almost monthly matt godfrey back in there as well so yeah, all in all, it's good read. Um, well worth sticking with. We want them to keep going. Um, do have concerns about the reviews. They're not really reviews. They're more sort of, um, you can buy this from this provider at this price. So take those with a, a pinch of salt. But um, yeah, always worth a read. Keep these guys going. 
So Match Fishing Magazine, what's it all about? Well, pretty much does what it says on the tin. Um, it's a collection of articles about uh, current match tactics. Uh, some of the top name anglers each month do some uh, some pretty good articles on you know fishing venues, what they're doing. Uh, really helpful. They have tackle reviews in there. Um, they have uh, a bait clinic in there, which is quite good. You can fire questions, maybe you'll get in the magazine. So overall, it's a really good read. Um, now, since Pole Fishing Magazine has been discontinued, they also have a Pole Fishing Magazine section in there. Pole Fishing Magazine, I had a leaf through, was, was sort of 50, 60 pages in length. The Pole Fishing Magazine section in Match Fishing Magazine is about five or six pages, so not really incorporated. Um, there are also articles that arguably could just be part of Match Fishing Magazine. So it's sad, the current climate that we're in, obviously the print game has taken a massive hit. I, I get it, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate um, that they've had to close that publication, clearly not making any money. Match Fishing has continued. The editor, Dan Webb, uh, who took over from Joe Carras, I think 12 months ago, has unfortunately left, so I don't know what's happened behind the scenes there. I felt he was starting to make real progress with the magazine, it was uh, it was looking good, he was kind of putting his stamp on it. Uh, Joe did a great job, I uh, really enjoyed reading it under his stewardship. Uh, and now we've got Dave Wesson who's uh, taken over the magazine again, so I think he's maybe a safe pair of hands, he's a former world champ, he's done it before, he's very active in the social media, uh, media world. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed that he can pick up the mantle, get them through this difficult time and, uh, and, and keep the content good and relevant. So, Match Fishing Magazine, a review. Okay, I like the content. I like the anglers that they feature. I'm really worried about one thing and that's the impartiality. The print, game is doing really badly at the moment there's no doubt about it when people have less disposable income when people are worried obviously one of the first things that goes is is luxuries printed magazines are a luxury so if it's a case of buying some food or spending nearly a five on a magazine you're not going to get the magazine they make a lot of their revenue from advertising so i would i would guess the actual sales a very small percentage of any profit that they may make the main bulk is going to come from the adverts. Match Fishing Magazine is full of adverts. That in itself is not an issue at all. You know, magazines have always been full of adverts. What worries me is the impartiality of the reviews. So, for example, uh, this month's got Browning on the back. Turn in a few pages. You've got Preston adverts. A few more pages got census adverts so all of the big guys are there now if any of these guys had a bad review in match fishing magazine and said right that's it you know you've slated our latest product uh, we're pulling our advertising revenue that would be a massive problem for them so as much as I like the articles and I like the content I am slightly skeptical about the accuracy of the reviews that they give and not because they're bad guys because they're kind of being held with a gun to their head, I would guess at this moment in time, they can't afford to say, I don't like the new Browning seat box or I don't like the new census range of brown baits or whatever um, because of X, Y and Z. Um, they're gonna have to be really vague with what they're saying. They stick to the facts about the, the sort of uh, specifications of the products and not really get into the nitty gritty. So in that sense, it's a shame that they may well be doing that. I'm not saying that they are, but yeah, I take the reviews with a pinch of salt, if I'm being honest. Um, the rest of the magazine is good. You know, it's a bit light on content right now, but that's completely understandable. I think they're recycling some stuff from the last year. Certainly saw a Steve Ringer article in this month's uh, where, you know, you can see straight away that he's wearing all of his Daiwa gear, even though he's gone across to Guru. So that's probably a shoot that they did last year or something. But, you know, give them a few months to find their feet again. Um, I certainly hope that the magazine keeps going. It is a good read. Um, really sad about Pole Fishing Magazine. But what I would say is, if you're a new starter to match fishing, if you're trying to improve your match fishing, definitely read it. Definitely look at the rigs, the tactics, uh, some of the comments that the anglers are making. 
and um, help keep it going.